Just before we get started, I do want to mention another channel that I host, which is called Mega Projects. It's a new one. It's a channel all about mankind's greatest achievements, where I take a deep look at buildings, projects, structures, and more. Whether it's the world's most impressive skyscrapers, or the International Space Station, or Chernobyl sarcophagus, I cover it all. New videos come out a couple of times a week on that channel called Mega Project. So if you think it could be for you, please do head over and subscribe. There is a link in the description below, and let's get into it. Have you ever wondered why hot dogs are called hot dogs? Or wonder no more? Well, it all started in China, when a dog was purchased in an exotic meat market in too soon? Well, let's get into it for real this time. You'll often hear that the name Hot Dog comes from a cartoon drawn by T.A. Dorgan during a New York Giants baseball game at the Polo Grounds around 1902 to 1906. The date varies depending on who's telling the story. At this game, he supposedly observed a vendor, Harry Stevens, selling hot Dachshund sausages. Dorgan, being inspired by this, drew a Dachshund in a hot dog bun but didn't know how to spell Dachshund, so just wrote Hot Dog. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing Dachshund right. I'm not really a dog person. How... Uh, Dach... Dachshund. Dachshund. Just imagine I said it correctly. So, is any of this true? Well, no. To date, no record of the cartoon in question has ever been found, but whether it existed or not doesn't even matter at all. The term hot dog referring to a form of sausage in a bun had been commonly known at least 10 years before Dorgan supposedly drew that cartoon, if not a lot longer. You see, the first documented references of hot dog were in a September the 28th, 1893 Knoxville Journal and in an October the 19th, 1895 edition of the Yale Records that contained a reference to the Kennel Club, which was a lunch wagon on campus that sold hot dogs in buns, which were referred to as hot dogs at this point. But, of course, we haven't actually answered the question, where does the term hot dog actually come from? We'll get to that eventually, but of course, we love that sweet, sweet YouTube watch time. <laughs> Dating back to at least the early 1880s, it became common to call sausages dogs, seemingly owing to the fact that people never knew exactly what meat was included in the sausages they were buying. Around that time, there were a lot of rumors that horse and dog meat were being commonly used to make sausages. There was even a song about this written in 1860, and the first documented accusations of dog meat being used in sausages was from 1845. Though the university students clearly didn't invent the name, it is thought that it was college students that popularized it as referring to hot sausages in buns. As alluded to, around this time, lunch wagons serving hot sausages in buns became common on college campuses, the bun being added so people could eat the sausage while they walked between classes. These lunch wagons were somewhat similar in quality of food to modern-day roach coaches. So, what is a roach coach? Oh, it's like a kebab van. <laughs> Gut trucks. <laughs> Okay. So the students took to calling them dog wagons, with their product being hot dogs, referring to the rumor that low-quality sausages were made from dog meat. Which would make no sense, because dog meat is actually expensive, because it's got an extra chain in it, because dogs only eat meat. So if you have a cow, right, the cow eats the grass, then the dog eats the cow, it's like an extra loss of energy on the way down, so dog meat is actually pretty expensive. The more you know. As the origin of the hot dog itself, it isn't known exactly when someone first got the bright idea to put sausages in a bun. However, the first historical reference of sausages themselves goes all the way back to one of the first books ever written, Homer's Odyssey, which states, as when a man besides a great fire has filled a sausage with fat and blood and turns it this way and that and is very eager to get it quickly roasted. While it is unlikely that the practice of putting sausages in some sort of bread only happened recently, bread being a staple food throughout history and sausages being relatively popular in many cultures, the first recorded instances of sausages being sold encased in bread came from around the mid-20th century where various German immigrants sold frankfurters with milk rolls and sauerkraut on the streets of New York City. There are numerous stories of people having claimed to be the first to put their sausage in a bun. <laughs> but a boom boom but nobody knows for sure which, if any, are true. A common theme among all of these stories is that the idea behind the bun was to be able to serve the hot dogs to customers on the streets without the customers burning their hands on the sausages and providing a convenient sort of holder for the sausage and any toppings without getting your hands messy. I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting messy either way. <laughs> Moving on from there, if you've ever wondered how hot dogs are actually made, well, wonder no more. It all starts in an exotic meat market in China. <laughs> 
<laughs> After the steaks, chops, breasts, ribs, thighs, hams, tenderloins, and briskets are removed, there's a fair amount of gristle, fat, and offal remaining on a butchered animal. And early on, humans, being rather non-wasteful with any potential food item, realized these leftovers could be put to good use. One of these products is the sausage, which became the hot dog, a classic of pre-cooked processed meat. The National Hot Dog and Sausage Council <laughs> apparently is a thing, also known as the NHDSC, notes that hot dogs, whether regular turkey, pork, or beef, begin with trimmings. This is purposefully vague, so customers don't vomit in their mouths at the thought of the product. If they advertised it more specifically, what's in there? Oh, it's a pig penis. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO, to quote, the raw meat materials used for pre-cooked cooked products are lower-grade muscle trimmings, fatty tissues, head meat, animal meat, animal skin, blood, liver, and other edible slaughter byproducts. Other edible slaughter byproducts. The penis. Yummy! <laughs> Incidentally, because of the butchering process, the leftovers used in products like hot dogs often have a fair amount of bacteria, so pre-cooking helps eliminate that issue. In addition, pre-cooking has the added benefit of helping to separate the remaining muscle meat, fat and connective tissues from the head and feet bones, as well as just generally making the trimmings more manageable. This is all lovely, isn't it? Enjoy your next hot dog. Because of the different sizes and types of carcasses, there are different pre-cooking times for different animals and different parts, although it typically occurs within the range of 150 to 190 degrees Fahrenheit, or 65 to 87 degrees Celsius. So this all brings us to the main production process. Like many other products such as bologna and liver sausage, hot dogs and frankfurters are created by the aforementioned leftovers, which once processed a bit are officially dubbed meat emulsion and also <laughs> meat batter. <laughs> Higher quality products are made from top quality meats and no chemicals. Examples include kosher, all beef hot dogs that have no byproducts, fillers, or artificial colors or flavors. Less expensive types of hot dogs will contain penis. <laughs> Less expensive types of hot dog will have chemicals, fats, and water binding agents included, and for many of these, the production process is simpler. First, pork and or beef trimmings are ground up in a machine and then extruded through a metal sieve-like device so they resemble ground hamburger meat. At this point, ground chicken trimmings, if any, are often added, and together the mixture is blended, emulsified, until it looks like meat batter. I do wonder what meat batter looks like, though. Now, salt, ground spices, and food starches are added along with some water and corn syrup or another sweetener. Towards the end of the process, more water is added to get the batter to proper consistency. No one wants a dry wiener after all. The batter is then pureed again, as well as having the excess air vacuumed out. Next, the emulsified meat is pumped into casings, usually cellulose but sometimes natural, and the strings of hot dogs are hung on racks and fully cooked in a smokehouse. Sometimes hardwood smoke is added for flavor. Later, the dogs are showered in cold salted water and then, if cellulose casings were used, put through a peeler to remove Remove the casings. Natural casings are left on. And do remember here that natural casings totally means the intestine of an animal that has been thoroughly cleaned and processed. Yay! Finally, finished dogs are inspected by. <laughs> Can you imagine describing to a pig like what happens to it after it dies? Well, we grind up all of the bits that are left over after we've eaten the good bits, and then we process them and put them in your intestines. <laughs> Finally, finished dogs are inspected by hands and only flawless tubed meat is routed to yet another machine where the dogs are grouped for packing and eventually to store shelves the world over. And that, fortunately, is where we're going to end our video today. I do hope you... I'm not going to ask whether you enjoyed it. You're not going to enjoy your next hot dog. Ah, oh, you probably will. Who cares? This has been Today I Found Out. Please do subscribe below, like this video, check out that other channel I mentioned, Mega Projects, linked to below. And thank you for watching.